I know, Peter, is this, a, is this, do you know if there's been any other? I think it's the first uh, German-English Māori edition ever published simultaneously and in a sense it's like bringing it home to have it to be here and to see it published here so that's very special. It would already been an exquisite example of uh, a tradition mm-hmm. that has survived uh, 3,000 generations of the civic voyaging and yet we are able to present photographs right alongside it in a complementary way. I guess also the, to, to continue on with what Hidani is saying, the idea of Māori having horizons that are in the international sphere beyond their tribal boundaries has been something that has been a reality for Māori for many generations, especially since, for example, uh, James Cook came to New Zealand in the late 18th century. So we've had Māori entrepreneurs, Māori business-minded people perhaps engaging in, in the wider world in Australia and then on to New Zealand. So thinking about the relevance of the international context for Māori survival and development. So here we are, I suppose, we're in Germany. We see an opportunity here too to broaden our relationships here and better understanding uh, amongst peoples. And with understanding and relationships, anything's possible. I think also um, we're isolated in the South Pacific, but uh, that isolation is also an advantage in that the way in which we engage in relationships um, may well offer opportunities for German people to think about how they engage in relationships um, after being so caught in the commercial sphere of Europe and maybe Māori have something to offer, a different way of doing business, a, um, a different way of engaging with other groups of people that's not just built on national boundaries. When we look at global economic transnational um, corporations, one of the big um, shifts has been towards creating a sense of tribe within or corporate culture. And more and more um, corporate cultures looking towards indigenous cultures and how they manage their internal structures, um, which we've been practicing for thousands of years, and um, provides a very efficient social and political mechanism sitting behind economic um, redistribution of wealth. Um, so that so this exhibition maybe provides the opportunity for Germany to reflect on its way of doing business and how um, social relationships may well be a very important aspect um, to their own future. This is really just a a small step, a small beginning through the exhibition. You can achieve so much and you need a lot more, which is, we're talking about here, building relationships and that's people. The images are a window into people and culture, but really it's the face-to-face dialogue that's going to be important, so we need to be here and you need to be in New Zealand. We've had um, people from Germany visit our village for over 100 years. The whole reason Rodu is here is because of German people fascinated in our culture um, and wanted to take something from our culture back here. But only now can we provide the tools of interpretation of what that really means to the German people, rather than having a German anthropologist try to explain our culture. Mm -hmm. For the first time, we now provide German people a direct insight into how we think and display our own culture. Mm. I think there's that too, but it's also not necessarily about, well, what can Māori teach Germans, or (laughs) what can we show German people in terms of how they do their business? German people, any people will do their business in their own way, but it's more about looking at what we have in common. I think it's what we have a dialogue, what is it that we're both trying to achieve? It's the idea of mutuality, the idea of relationships and partnerships that are shared amongst all peoples. So that's not anything especially Māori, it's more of a human principle. So I think that's what needs to be emphasised. I think it's both um, 
the historical, sort of the uh, if you like the authentic original Māori culture, but also the tensions and the uh, interactions that exist today. Because I, ju- I don't know that it's that extensively reported, and the fact that Māori have a you know a, a role and a very influential role, which is changing the nature of New Zealand society, is very interesting. Um, but obviously, there's a strong sort of ethnographic base, if you like. So we've found that, you know, in, in my previous publishing, also there's been a lot of interest with, um, you know, whether it's carving or traditions, dance, um, you know, integral matters relating to um, to the culture. But um, but also, I guess, in a contemporary setting, language preservation or issues of political enfranchisement. Up to today, the wider public of the world have um, thought of Māori as wearing grass skirts and doing dance, <coughs> doing haka or, or living in grass huts. Um, these pictures will show that um, on occasion we may get dressed up, but for most of the time we are just like anyone else in the world, but we live in twin streams of culture, not just one or the other. So we integrate the core values of our ancestors with living in a modern global society. So be it in the South Pacific. So that is the uh, that is the, the challenge for the visitors is as Hedini said, to be open minded and see Maori not just um, a primitive peoples in the South Pacific that um, I just good at song and dance, or rugby. <laughs> they can also get the book to prepare for the exhibition. They can get the book. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Buy the book. <laughs> there's pictures and there's words, and it's in German, and it's in English, and it's in Maori, so that might be helpful.